part one of this little video series, um, I showed you how to go ahead and install your drip rail chrome. And we saw that it was pretty meticulous and very, very stressful to put that on to make sure that it doesn't mess up. But what we're going to show you in this video is the easy and simple way to remove the drip rail chrome. And the car that we're working on here, we're not working on a Mustang. This is a 1967 GTO. And I'm going to show you how to take the drip rail chrome off of this vehicle because they're all the same. Like I was telling you in part one, they're all the same. And I'm going to show you the easy way to take this off. And I'm going to show you some mistakes that people make when they're taking them off that can really, really ruin the chrome itself. Welcome to DIY. Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. most common mistake that people are going to make when removing these, and I want many to come on over here and look at this. You can see there's a lip under here, and this is where that chrome rolls around right here. This is the lip. So what you have to do is you have to get that lip off of there to pop the chrome off, and, and it's still hooked up here if many can come on up here now. So uh, in part one, remember we showed you where you hooked it on here, and then you rolled it around. You roll it over, and then it snaps into place. Well, what a, pot, a lot of people do, and I think I showed you this in part one, what they'll do is they'll take some channel lock pliers, and then they'll put tape on the ends of it, and then they'll take that chrome, and they'll kind of grab it like this, and then they'll roll it up. See what I'm doing here? And what that does, even when you have tape on it, you're actually bending the edge of this molding right here. So I'm going to show you how to take this off without ruining it. And it's real simple and real easy, and you only need two tools to do it with. And if you look right here, you can see here's our chrome that we took off that side. I want you to pay attention. There's the lip that rolls around right here where my thumb is. That's that lip. And then here's the lip that catches the top of the rail right there. And you can look at this mold, and you can see there's not one dent, one flaw in it. It still looks like factory original, and we will probably be getting this polished up or anodized or whatever it takes and use this because remember what I told you if you got the OEM factory parts use them don't go with the aftermarket they'll never fit so if you look right here you can see where I already started this you can see where I've already um, started my journey all the way up to this corner up here and the reason I started on this end over here on this particular car is if you look right here you can see it's got a sharp 45 degree angle where this thing actually hooks on so you want to find the easiest most possible way to start taking this off and as we look down here you can see this is where we would start and I started this and I said you know what I showed them how to put it on let's go ahead and show them how to take it off and the easiest way to take this off you only need two tools and what I use is I use a pry bar just like this and I use a hammer and the reason I use this long pry bar is because it gives me more leverage to hold on to it instead of using a little chisel and what I'm going to do, if many can like get behind me here and kind of, you know, ride down the side there, I'm going to take my pry bar just like this, and then I'm going to go ahead and tap that, and I want you to watch it. You're going to see it move. And it'll start coming off. All right, and then once we get that, then we can go ahead and start jiggling around, and we're just going to work our way just like this you'll see it start popping up in a minute here it comes and then once you get around the corner of it right here see how I'm doing that I'm just grabbing the lip and then I'm tapping it off 
like you're watching me do here. Very carefully, I'm not doing it hard. Now we'll go down here and we'll get a little more. And if you're watching close, you can actually see it moving to where I can grab the lip of it with my pry bar. And then once I grab that lip, it pretty much comes right off, as you can see. And you can kind of see where the lip is. Alright. First thing you want to do is you want to catch the whole thing right here. Alright. Then you want to pop that out to where it'll pop out. And then once you get it to pop out, then you want to catch the lip of the aluminum or the stainless steel. And then it starts popping off and rolling off very, very easy. And you can see I'm just tapping on it. I'm not even tapping hard. And then I'm just going to kind of roll it off. And I'm not pulling on it. I'm just getting it started to where I already pulled it out to the edge. And I'm just going to continue to keep going here. You can see it rolling off as I'm tapping it. Can you see that? Yeah. Alright, so see, it's already off all the way up to here. See how it's coming off? And all I've done is tap on it to where the lip is right here. I've only tapped that metal to where it would hit this lip right here. And once you get going on it, it, it starts coming off very, very easy. You just got to take your time. Here it comes. Here it comes. There it comes. Okay. I think we got it. Just got to take your time. A little bit more. I want to be real careful on this end right here. Use our pry bar. Just like that. We're going to be real careful not to bend it up. Alright, because this corner is what's really, really the hard part on these GTOs is getting this corner off. And then there's our chrome right there. You can see it's in mint condition and it's ready to use and put back on the car. Another thing that you don't want to do when you take these off is if you look at it, you can see how it kind of comes out like this. Do you see what I'm saying, Minnie? Mm -hmm. All right, see how it's not perfectly bent flat? You want to leave it like that. All right, don't try to bend it back in shape like this and bend it and all that. Just leave it like it is and it'll fall right back into place. But that's how you remove that. That's the right way to do it without using channel lock pliers and screwdrivers and all this other stuff. And if you look down this lip right here, the locking lip, you can see it's in perfect, perfect condition, just like it was brand new. So I hope this has helped you out. Uh, drip Rail 101, my friend Pete showed you how to do it. All cars that have Drip Rail Chrome, they're all the same. Um, you're going to run into a couple that might have a screw on each end or something like that. But as far as the Drip Rail molding goes, it all comes off the same way. That's how it's done. Um, you might be working on a post car instead of a uh, coupe like this one. And then what you're going to do is you'll just work your way around that post. But you want to open your windows up and you just want to take your pry bar just like I showed you. Like this right here and just tap it along the edge. And once it starts popping off it'll usually just start coming off by itself. This has been on the car for 51 years. This is a 67. This is 2018, that's 51 years, am I right? I don't think so. So that's a long time, and guess what? Perfect this is gonna, condition. It's gonna last another 51 years. We'll see you later, take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete. 
if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, subscribe to it. It's worth it. If you're restoring a car, if you're doing any type of paint and body work, if you're changing motors out, if you're doing electrical wiring, whatever you're doing to your automobile, this is the place to be. DIY Auto School right here. So you can learn stuff just like that. Doing it right, doing it right. Because if you're not doing it right, you definitely aren't doing it at all. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.